Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Hey, Shagheads, Curtis Tucker here with another episode of a Shaggy Live podcast. Thank you guys for checking in. Appreciate you guys that have been listening to all of my random podcast going on lately and uh, wanted to try to squeeze one in. My goal is uh, to get at least one new episode every week and uh, sometimes I just uh, run out of time or sometimes I run out of ideas. So if you guys have some great show ideas or if there's something you want me to talk about, please let me know. Hit me up at uh, shags at shaggyduck.com or curtis at curtistucker.com. Don't forget, if you guys are listening to this podcast. You can also watch it at uh, youtube.com slash Curtis Tucker. Or if you are seeing me wave at you and you're watching the podcast, but you're not able to watch them all the time, you can listen to the podcast on all of your favorite apps. And then I also have uh, kind of a written form uh, of most of these podcasts on curtistucker.com. And you guys can just go there and read it. And then at the bottom of those pages, I usually have the podcast audio and the YouTube video embedded. So you get written audio and video all on one page. So that's all on curtistucker.com. And again, you guys send me your ideas. If there's uh, things that you think uh, would be fun to have me talk about, I would love to investigate them. Or if there's some cool adventure or challenge you'd like me uh, to attempt and then to uh, kind of uh, film it and let you guys know how it goes, I can also do that as well. So hit me up and I would love to hear your ideas. Uh, I am officially over the one million steps, so uh, uh, thank you to everybody that kept up with that. I did go get my new... A uh, pair of shoes today. They were a pair of um, Brooks running shoes, and so tomorrow morning I will test those out. Uh, so anyway, uh, on to another subject for tonight's episode, and tonight we're going to be talking about movies again, and tonight's episode is about those movies that you watch over and over and over and over again, and so I have got a group of movies that I watch over and over again. I thought there was only like a handful of them, uh, but then once I started writing the blog post for this episode, it just kept growing and growing and growing. And then before I knew it, I was like, wow, there's there's quite a few movies that uh, I watch over and over again. And so, so um, there's kind of two different categories of, of these movies. There's movies that I watch over... And over again, or that I've seen a whole bunch of times, and those are kind of in the bottom category. But then I've got a list of 35 movies that I came up with that pretty much if I'm flipping channels or if I hear uh, one of them's on or, or something like that, these are movies that I specifically will pretty much stop whatever I'm watching or searching for and just watch that movie. So these are movies that not only do I watch over and over again, but I just automatically leave the station on these movies if if I catch them. And I started this blog post last week, and I think since last week I've seen um, two of these movies on this list twice already since I started the episode. So, so basically, um, it, not only is it going to be a list of movies that I personally watch over and over again, but hopefully there might be a couple of movies in here that you guys have not seen. And that's why uh, I think it might be fun for you guys to, number one, compare your list of movies that you guys always um, watch over and over again. But then if you're looking for movies, because I'm always out to, to find maybe movies from either a long time ago or a few years ago that I may have not seen. And so hopefully there's going to be a few movies on my list that you guys uh, have not seen, and I uh, will encourage you guys uh, to go see them. So, um, you know, there's some great movies like, uh, and they've been on this week, uh, The Green Mile and The Shawshank Redemption. Now, I love those movies, and the movies that are on my list are not like, 
the best movies ever, Academy Award winning movies. They're just movies that I, for some reason, there's something in every one of these movies that I can just watch over and over and over again. Whereas, and and so I'm going to tell you, The Green Mile and Shawshank Redemption, I've seen probably a half a dozen to a dozen times each, but they're not on my list. I, I, I number one, Shawshank Redemption is too long. Well, they're actually both too long. Um, so, and as much as I enjoy them, uh, neither one of them is on my list, but, but those are kind of the, the kind of movies that I'm kind of talking about. So, um, I'm going to get right into it, give you guys a little bit of a description of the movie in case you haven't seen it. And then I'll kind of give you an idea of maybe why I, uh, watch it every time, uh, it comes on. And what's the, the real fun part of, of this is, is when I'm flipping channels and there's either two or three of these movies on at the same time. Um, what I found is I don't always go for the same movie over the other two, one or two always. So, so sometimes like if let's say Lost Boys, Goonies and Stand By Me are all on, you know, they're depending on which one of those three I haven't seen in a while, uh, will probably would probably be the one I would stay with and watch, but uh, I do get conflicted sometimes because, uh, like I say, I didn't realize this list was going to be this big. So, so here we go. Um, and and these are in no particular order. These are just the way they came out of my head, and so um, uh, I'm just going to start at the top. And the first one is The Warriors, and I know there's probably going to be a lot of people that have not seen the movie The Warriors, and it is from 1979, so uh, any movie from the 70s I'm going to probably really like, but it was a really cool movie because it was one of those movies that um, we were transitioning from junior high to high school and getting to go out on our own and watch movies without our parents having to take us and then meeting people after the movie. And there was just this time period of kind of 77 through 79 where um, me and my buddies all went and saw these movies together. And this was one of those movies. And basically it's a story of um, a whole bunch of gangs in New York and they all go to this one place to hear this one guy talk and then he gets shot and so everything goes crazy and this gang uh, called the warriors has to get back to their home turf and they are being accused of shooting the guy so all the other gangs in the city are out to get them and so it's an adventure of them um, trying to make uh, their way home and so this was just kind of one of those really cool uh, movies for us is to see each one of the gangs kind of had their own look, their own outfits, their own style. And so um, that really made it fun to watch the movie and see how these gangs looked. And then the soundtrack, uh, not only the, <clears throat> the soundtrack, but the score of the movie is really great. One of my favorites. And so this is one, there's going to be several of these movies that I will tell you, I have the score or the soundtrack on vinyl. And this is one of those movies that I have, um, the vinyl on. And one of the hit songs from this movie is in the city by the Eagles. So not only is it on the Eagles album from that same time period, but it's also on the warriors soundtrack. So so that's a fun movie. The same year, uh, Phantasm. This is another movie that um, probably not a lot of you have seen. It was kind of a cult classic. Uh, the residents of a small town um, start noticing strange things happening at a funeral home, and um, it's run by a guy called The Tall Man, uh, played by Angus Scrim. He's the town's mortician. Uh, the, the younger kid in the movie, um, um, uh, named Mike, um, he notices the tall man doing weird things and all these little, little creatures or beings running around. So he sneaks into the, um, mortuary and sees this ball that zips around and tries to kill people. And it, it's just a really 
creepy, cool story, especially if you're a kid, you know, like I say, transitioning from junior high to high school. Um, it was a really cool story. And so we, we really fell in love with the movie. And again, I fell in love with the score for this movie and have uh, it on vinyl. And so uh, I can listen to it uh, over and over, especially during Halloween. And this really isn't a Halloween movie. And it's not a slasher horror flick. It's just kind of a creepy, cool, kind of a weird story. So I would highly recommend uh, seeing Phantasm. And then there's a whole bunch of, you know, Phantasm 2, 3, 4, maybe 5. But I would highly recommend just watching the first one and, and maybe stopping there. Uh, next one is The Goonies, and even though this one's a little bit on the silly side, it was just one of those movies, came out in 1985, that uh, was, kind of really reminded me of me and my buddies back in the 70s, you know, there was a gang of five of us, and we always did stuff together, and we rode our banana seat bikes, and we went on these adventures all over town, and that's exactly what The Goonies was, um, these kids go trying to find a treasure and they end up finding the treasure and this huge pirate ship. But then there's this um, family um, that are thieves that are trying to catch them. And, and so it's kind of a cool story and they go through caves and there's booby traps and all kinds of fun stuff. So it's just one of those movies that reminds me of, of when I grew up and, and things that I wanted to do. So a really fun movie, um, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, uh, from 1977. Again, it's one of those, uh, movies was in junior high. It came out, we went to the theater as a gang, uh, together and watched it and then, you know, went and ate pizza afterwards and talked to girls and went to the arcade. But um, I'm a real huge Richard Dreyfus fan. And so um, Richard Dreyfus was great in this movie. It was a cool story. Um, even though it's about aliens, it's not like over the top aliens. It's it's almost believable, um, and it takes place. They're all trying to get to Devil's Tower, which is a really cool place. Which um, I am planning a trip to go to Devil's Tower, uh, and basically because of Close Encounters, and so it's just a really cool one of my favorite uh, science fiction movies. Uh, a lot of other great actors in the movie, so. Uh, check it out if you haven't seen it. Uh, the Goodbye Girl, uh, 1977, another Richard Dreyfuss movie, another 70s movie, another one of those movies. Now, this one's kind of a chick flick. Um, Richard Dreyfuss, again, uh, even though he's the star of the movie and not really a ladies' man, he just he does a great job uh, in this film. It's got Marsha Mason and um, just a really good... Uh, fun movie, uh, and then also um, a great song, uh, The Goodbye Girl uh, song came out of this movie there from the 70s, so check that out. Uh, I mentioned it earlier, Stand By Me was kind of the same, in the same vein as Goonies. It came out in 1986, uh, based on a short story written by Stephen King. It's about these boys that set off on, a, on an adventure to find a dead body, um, Jerry O'Connell, River Phoenix, Will Wheaton, and uh, Corey Feldman. Uh, great cast. And then it's also got um, uh, all the older gang, um, Kiefer Sutherland in it. So it's got a really great cast. And uh, just kind of, again, it's set in a little bit earlier time. I think it's set in the 60s. And um, just kind of a fun adventure following those boys and hearing them talk and and all the different things that go on in the story. Really a pretty simple story. Um, and then it's got some really fun songs from back in the day. Uh, most of the songs in, in Stand By Me are a little earlier than what I really listened to, but uh, it still does have a lot of great songs in it. So uh, check that out. Boy, the mid-80s did have quite a few really cool movies. Um, it seems like there was this whole genre of of youth related movies. Uh, another one of them was the lost boys from 1987, uh, Jason Patrick and Corey Haim. Uh, they moved to a new town in California and basically find out from Corey Feldman and Jameson Newlander that, uh, there are vampires there. And so 
it's a really cool kind of a vampire movie. Um, but then it, again, it's about these kids trying to figure out who the head vampire is. And it's got a great soundtrack. It's got uh, some really cool visuals, um, great storyline. Just one of those movies that you kind of, you, you know, you wish, oh, wow, I wish I had lived there and I'd been part of their gang and, and got to do all that fun stuff. And so if you have not seen The Lost Boys, check that out. And they've, they're always, I, there was kind of a, a um, sequel, but they're still talking about possibly doing another sequel to Lost Boys, but you never know. Um, Twister in 1996. Now, Twister, uh, the story of kind of competing um, tornado, tornado storm chasing teams, uh, everybody trying to get a contraption into a tornado so they can um, track tornadoes better. Uh, the really cool thing about the movie Twister is a lot of it was filmed here in Oklahoma and around my hometown. And then a lot of the weather guys that are actually on television in the movie are our weather guys. And then there's uh, some people in the movie that uh, were extras that I know. And so that makes it always fun to watch Twister. It's also got a great soundtrack. It's got great a great cast. Um, so it's always fun. Bill Paxton and Helen Hunt, uh, they had great chemistry during the movie. And so, um, and then uh, Carrie, um, the the doctor he, that he was going to marry, she was also in Lost Boys. So um, Carrie L. Elwes, L. I'm not sure how to pronounce her last name. Sorry about that. But uh, yeah, so that's always fun because I do go storm chasing and tornado chasing and um, a little bit of what you see in the movie actually does happen. So that makes it kind of fun. And then they just film, filmed the, uh, it's kind of a reboot called Twisters. They just filmed that here in Oklahoma and it's coming out this July and I was an extra in it. So hopefully it turns out to be as big as Twister. And it's one of those movies that hopefully I will watch over and over and over again. Um, the Perfect Storm. Uh, this may be a movie that kind of uh, snuck by you that you may not have seen. It's from 2000, and it's basically based on a true story. tells a story of uh, the lives of those guys that go out uh, fishing. And a lot of times they go out really far and they get stuck in storms and things like that. And this uh, happened on Halloween of 19... It's a story based on what happened on Halloween of 1991 when these uh, different storm systems all merged together and formed what was called the perfect storm. And um, it's got um, some great actors... Um, Gosh, and I don't have the names. For some reason, I don't have all the names in front of me. But um, hang on. I'm going to have to look that up real quick. But it's also, it's got a great movie um, soundtrack and more the score on it. Um, and so I, I think one of the reasons I watch that movie over and over again is just because I can have it on and be working. And I just love the the music in the background because it's so good uh it's got diane lane george clooney um uh, mark Wahlberg, and then just a whole bunch of other people um rotten tomatoes didn't give it a very good score i i really like it it's it's just a, it's a really fun enjoyable movie um gives you a little bit of insight into the fishing industry and what it's like to be out on a boat so uh, check that out uh, 1975's Jaws. I don't know what it is about Jaws. It's just one of those movies that if I'm flipping the channel and it's on, I'll just stop right there and I'll just watch it. Uh, Roy Scheider, uh, a sheriff in Amity Island, and bodies start uh, washing up that have been bitten by some really large shark. Uh, Richard Drivers shows up. Um, as Matt Hooper to try to uh, figure out what's going on. And they go out on a ship with Quint, played by Robert Shaw. And uh, it's those three against the l biggest great white shark you've ever seen. I'm sure almost every, surely, except uh, maybe younger people. Um, even if you're, if you're young and you've never seen Jaws, please uh, go see Jaws. Uh, I think one of the reasons I like it is it's got great music, 
um, and just reminds me of, of growing up in the 70s and going to watch um, some of those great movies. Uh, one of my really favorite uh, movies is Jurassic Park from 1993. Uh, it's a Steven Spielberg blockbuster. And, you know, I didn't know a whole lot about it. And I was never, I mean, I always liked dinosaurs, but I wasn't, you know, like, you know, heavy into dinosaurs. But man, the first time I saw Jurassic Park, man, it was, I just, it blew me away. It was one of the coolest movies. It was a cool storyline. The effects were done really well. And it has one of the best movie scores out there. And so I really love the music. Um, it's got Sam Neill and Laura Dern and Jeff Goldblum. Uh, they all play their parts perfectly. And uh, again, it's got a couple of kids in it. And so it's kind of, a, it's a, like they're going through an amusement ride and it, it, everything goes haywire. And so then it turns into an adventure and um, people trying to, you know, fight for their lives. And so it's a great movie. It's kind of like being on a roller coaster, you know, it's up and down and, uh, dinosaurs everywhere and people trying not to get eaten. So if you haven't seen Jurassic Park, now that whole franchise, um, I really do enjoy. wasn't a big fan of the second Jurassic Park. I did like the third and then the whole Jurassic World. Um, it's kind of included in on that, so I like all that. Um, next movie is Signs from M. Night Shyamalan um, from 2002. It's got Mel Gibson and um, Joaquin Phoenix, Rory Culkin, Abigail Breslin, uh, basically about a family that's living in this house uh, surrounded by cornfields, and then all of a sudden um, the, those mysterious circles appear in the field, and then before they know it, there's aliens um, landing all over the place, and it's on the news, and their house gets what they think is surrounded by aliens, and there's a alien trying to get into their house, and but then there's a backstory of Mel Gibson being a preacher and losing his wife, and then everybody in the movie does these quirky things, and then at the end of the movie, all the quirky things that they did all come together and help save them, and um, M. Night makes a a special appearance in the movie, and so it's just it's just a fun movie. It's uh, it, again, it's an alien movie that's almost believable because it doesn't go overboard. But uh, another kind of a survival type movie, even though pretty much most of the movie takes place just right there in their house. Um, but uh, a good movie. I always uh, always wonder uh, when I do quirky things over and over for no really apparent reason. I always wonder, am I doing this because it's going to come in really handy in the future? And I always think that because of the movie signs. So check that one out. Um, this one you might have missed, uh, 1985's Vision Quest. It's about a high school wrestler named Loudon Swain, played by Matthew Modine. And he uh, basically decides that uh, kind of like me, he wants a challenge, and so he changes weight, and he wants to wrestle the, uh, basically wants to lose 20 pounds so he can wrestle the uh, the uh, state champion that uh, hasn't ever been beat. So uh, during all of uh, him trying to lose weight and wrestling, he f- kind of falls for a girl, and so he's distracted by her, And um, it's just one of those movies where it gives you a little insight into wrestling. If you guys haven't um, been around wrestling much, it's not like a super wrestling movie. And and we're talking like real high school, real wrestling. Um, But uh, some great music. It's got some Madonna in it. Um, Matthew Modine uh, does great in it. It's got some other 80s songs in it. So... Um, it's just a, it's an underdog movie. If you, if you love underdog movies, uh, this is your, your movie, uh, cast away from 2000, uh, basically a simple movie. Uh, Tom Hanks gets stuck on an Island, uh, becomes a castaway and it's him trying to just survive on the Island and then eventually making it back. Um, Tom Hanks, Helen Hunt, 
basically, while he's on the island, he befriends a volleyball, which he names Wilson. And um, then he's got to try to time everything perfectly with the tide to uh, escape um, his island. And I can't remember how um, how many years, but he's on the island for like years. Uh, in the meantime, his girlfriend, who he was going to marry, ends up getting married because she thinks he's dead. And so at the end of the movie, he lets her go, and he he sets off, and um, <clears throat> he's trying to decide basically what he wants to do with the rest of his life. And the you know the very last scene, he's trying to make a decision. If you really pay attention to that scene, I think you can tell what he decides to do. But uh, one of the lines that I just really love uh, Hank's saying in the movie, and it's it's a movie of hope. Um, you may think you've lost everything, um, but, you know, you probably haven't. There's always that little bit of hope. And he says, uh, there's a whole bunch of lines before, but then he says, uh, I got to keep breathing because tomorrow the sun will rise who knows what the tide could bring? And so it just kind of gives you that good feeling. Oh, and the the score on this movie is one of the best as well. I can listen to it. It's on my playlist. Um, it's another movie that I can put on just because I like to listen to the music over and over and over again. So um, just a great movie of, of hope. Uh, a, a little bit newer movie, and I say newer, but it's it's even old now, but... Uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood from 2019, a Quentin Tarantino movie. Um, Basically, it has um, Brad Pitt and um, Leonardo DiCaprio. And basically, Leonardo's kind of a washed-up actor, and his um, stuntman is Brad Pitt. But then it kind of tells the story of the time around the the Manson murders, and it includes the Manson characters, but um, Tarantino ends the movie with a twist. He, he it's not it's not like a doc, you know, it's not like true to what actually happened. It's kind of like what would life have been like had this happened rather than what really happened, and which makes it a really cool movie because at the end you're cheering because you wish that, you know, a movie like that could have changed history, or that's the way that uh, the uh, Man- whole Manson thing would have turned out. But kind of gives you a little bit of insight into the Manson story. Um, a lot of uh, cool Hollywood-type things, a great uh, soundtrack, some great songs. Um, so it's just a, it's a fun movie. It kind of bounces uh, from one thing to another and goes forward and backward and you've kind of got to keep up with it, which I think is kind of fun. Uh, it seems like it's a little bit of a longer movie, but um, it's just one of those for some reason I can, every time it comes on, I can just watch it again. I uh, like a lot of the lines in it, a lot of the uh, interaction between the actors. So check that out. Uh, 19, this, uh, this franchise started in 1999, The Mummy. And for some reason, I really like movies that are set in the desert. So if there's a desert and lots of sand, I see. I seem to like the movie. They seem to be more epic type movies. It's like nobody makes a movie about the desert and sand where it's not an epic type movie. And so uh, the Mummy franchise uh, with Brendan Fraser set in the Sahara Desert, and they're set in the 1920s, which is really cool because they don't, they they feel like they're in the 20s, but then they also feel like they're more modern as well. Um, and the story about a mummy, and, and then it kind of continues on through the franchise, but uh, really, really fun adventure movies. And, that, and, you know, my one of my words is adventure. I always like uh, to turn everything into an adventure. And uh, if you like movies, uh, the Mummy franchise is just one of those type of franchises where it's all about adventure. Every every movie is, is kind of an epic adventure. So if you like those type of movies, that uh, would be one you'd want to see. Uh, the John Wick franchise started in 2014. Uh, Keanu Reeves... Um, does really great, basically about a guy that's uh, 
I guess they're kind of like hit men and they they go to a hotel called the Continental and that's where they're kind of safe and and there's this organization that kind of controls them and they kind of they put hits on people but then they also put hits on each other and it's just kind of a cool story and uh i mean totally unbelievable because john wick can never be killed he's shot and stabbed and beat up and thrown off roofs and uh, basically everything you can do to him is done to him but he never dies and so um i think they're they're getting ready to make the last john wick movie and i hope they tie everything together what i would like to see is like a movie where they explain everything where did this organization come from and and what you know what was the purpose of it and and all that good stuff so um even though i really like the movie um i would like a little more explanation especially um, <clears throat> whenever they do the last one so uh, another desert movie that i really enjoy and uh you may not have seen this one so if you haven't seen this one i highly recommend seeing this one from 2004 uh, and I think it's a reboot as well. I think there was a a first version done way back when, but uh, this is from 2004, Flight of the Phoenix, and it takes place in the Gobi Desert, and Dennis Quaid stars in it with Tyrese Gibson and a whole bunch of other uh, actors in it. But basically, they are in a plane, a cargo plane that goes down and crashes into the desert and... Um, one of the guys on the plane says he's that he's a plane builder and he they can take he thinks they can take the parts from the kind of the twin engine and twin fuselage plane and put the good parts together into a single plane and so they work together and they do that but then there's bandits and smugglers that are getting closer and closer to them and so they're trying to beat uh, trying to get the plane done before they get attacked by the smugglers. Uh, they're running out of food and water. Uh, some of the people just want to wait to be rescued. Other people um, don't think they're ever going to be rescued, so they want to get out of there. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of fun twists to the movie, and I don't want to give those away, especially if you haven't seen it. But um, really, uh, it's it's kind of an epic movie, really fun a uh, great story. So um, even if you've seen the first one from back in the, I don't know, 40s maybe. Um, I'm not exactly sure when the first one came out, but I think you'll really enjoy this one. 1978's Halloween. Um, that is a classic. And not only do I watch it uh, multiple times every Halloween, but uh, every now and then I'll just uh, catch it. Um, here and there. Now, if it's the middle of summer and it comes on, I'm, this might be one of those that I might not watch every time it comes on, but I, I have a feeling if it's in the middle of the a really hot summer and this came on, I might watch it just, so, just to get that fall feeling again. But um, it's just one of those great horror flicks that doesn't have a lot of slashing and blood in it. It's just more a lot of suspense. And even though I know what's going to happen. Um, it's got a great score, a great soundtrack, and I've got it on vinyl as well. Uh, I can just listen to that music over and over and over again. Um, it's fun. And a uh, really cool thing about the movie is the story and the setting and the neighborhood could be basically any town, any small town in America. So it kind of gives you that feeling of, hey, this could happen in my neighborhood. So... Uh, check that out if you haven't seen it. From 1972, The Poseidon Adventure. Um, I mean, this movie actually has the word adventure in it, so it's got to be a, an adventure. And I think this is probably uh, the first movie I saw that was a big adventure. And uh, for some reason, I think I saw this alone. Not alone, but with a buddy I think our parents let us ride our bikes to the movie theater and see this, I think. Um, but I'm not quite sure. But uh, I think hopefully uh, pretty much everybody's seen. But it's about a big um, cruise ship that gets hit by a wave and it turns upside down. 
and Gene Hackman is kind of the lead guy. And basically, because the ship is upside down and they're kind of at the top of the ship, they have to go through the ship to the bottom because they figure if they can get to the bottom, maybe they can break their way out of the ship. And the whole time the ship is filling up with water and there's other people that they run into and then there's obstacles that they have to go through. So it's a it's a cool adventure Um, a survival type movie. And um, I just, even watching it today, every time that I watch it, it just, it still feels, um, you know, modern and up to date. It it hasn't really dated itself. So the Poseidon Adventure, and then they've redone it with uh, Kurt Russell, which is, it's an okay version, but um, I think for the Poseidon Adventure, I would always go back to the original 1972 version. Uh, 2000, Almost Famous. It's a fun movie uh, set in 1973. So, of course, it's a a fun movie. And also the soundtrack. I've got the soundtrack on vinyl. It's got some great songs throughout it. And not only does it have great songs, but the movie is about um, musicians. It's about a band that this kid, a 15-year-old kid, he kind of wiggles his way into being able to go on tour with them, and uh, he's on assignment from Rolling Stone magazine to do a story on them. And the band is called Stillwater, which, you know, I went to school in Stillwater, Oklahoma, so that's kind of fun. But um, it's got a a great cast uh, to it as well. And the band Stillwater actually has uh, some really great... Uh, songs in it as well, um, but it kind of gives you a behind the scenes of um, the touring world and groupies, and even though they don't want to be called groupies, but uh, it's got Kate Hudson and Anna Paquin. Jason Lee is great in it. He's the lead singer for the band Stillwater, so um, highly recommend it. It's got uh, kind of a great ending. It's kind of a it's a it's a great um, coming of age movie, and I really really um, kind of like Stand by Me and some of those. I really love those um, coming of age movies. So I I put that on that list. Uh, another one of those uh, fun kid uh, movies from 1986, uh, Pretty in Pink. Uh, really enjoy that movie. Molly Ringwald and Annie Potts, John Cryer, Andrew McCarthy. Basically, uh, she kind of lives on the uh, poor side of town, and um, Andrew McCarthy, Blaine, lives on the rich side of town, but then they really like each other, so they're having to deal with uh, the riches and the poor kids, and there's all that conflict, and um, John Cryer is ducky, and then Annie Potts works in a record store, so it's kind of cool because it's got uh, it's got a great music in it as well. Um, great ending. It's one of those. Uh, it's kind of a chick flick, um, but uh, a, a great ending. And it's a John Hughes, I believe it's a John Hughes movie. Um, and so check it out if you haven't seen it. I think most people have seen Pretty in Pink. Um, really enjoy it. Uh, one you might not have seen from 1999 is 10 Things I Hate About You. And it is a really fun movie. It's got Julia Stiles and um, Heath Ledger. And basically, again, a group of high school kids. And Julia Stiles is kind of a staunch, uh, hates school, hates the prom type kid. And Heath Ledger gets kind of... Uh, he ends up in kind of a bet to see if he can go out with her. And, but then of course, once they start going out, he really likes her, but then she finds out that he was doing it on a bet and everything gets complicated and uh, all that fun stuff. But uh, it's a fun, fun movie. It's also got some great uh, songs in it. Um, I don't have it on vinyl, but I I think I've got uh, the soundtrack on it on CD and so it's got a great, uh, uh, some great 90s. And it's even got, uh, it's got a, a great version of um, I Want You to Want Me on it. So really fun movie. Check it out if you haven't seen it. Um, one of the more recent movies, uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife. Now, I liked the movie Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2, but I didn't love them. I mean, when they come on, I rarely 
ever watch them, but uh, for some reason I really like Ghostbusters Afterlife, and I think, again, it's kind of one of those kid movies, this group of kids out on an adventure, they're chasing ghosts, they're trying to figure out what's going on in this town, which happens to be um, an imaginary town in Oklahoma, so that kind of makes it fun. And uh, the really cool thing about um, Ghostbusters Afterlife is it's a whole new cast um, and again, like I say, it's it's heavy with kids. But then at the end of the movie, it brings back everybody from basically the original Ghostbusters, even the ambulance, and um, kind of ties them together uh, really well. It's just it's just a fun movie, and so I've really enjoyed it. And so every time it comes on, for some reason, I just uh, leave it on and I just kind of watch it again. Um. For some reason, the next one kind of gets me in the feels every time I watch it. Uh, from 2022, Top Gun Maverick. And, uh, you know, the thing about the Top Gun movies is I went to see Top Gun when it came out. And basically, I'm the same age as Tom Cruise. And so so my life was kind of at the same point and I was the same age as Tom Cruise when he was in Top Gun. And then now that Top Gun Maverick has come out, we're both 30 years older. And the same things have kind of happened. You know, people are dying. Things have changed. And so it's just, I think it's that nostalgia from remembering the first Top Gun that really gets to me. But um, this Maverick is, uh, he's not a young hotshot pilot he's kind of the instructor and there's just something about this movie that that it's got great music but it's just it's him breaking the rules but never breaking them in a bad way where he like gets booted um he kind of always does the wrong thing which turns out to be the right thing and it, that just makes it a really fun it's a really fun fast paced action it's an action movie and uh i don't know something about it so if if top gun comes on i usually don't watch it um i might watch it maybe once a year or once every couple of years uh it's just one of those movies that i don't watch all the time top gun maverick since it's come out on um streaming service which has probably been maybe a year i've probably seen it a dozen, almost a dozen times, 10, 10 to 12 times. I don't know. Um, again, I, it's got some, it's got a Lady Gaga song, um, but it's got some older songs in it too. So it's just, it's, I've got, um, the soundtrack on it on vinyl as well. So it's got uh, great music. Uh, 1997 Contact. If you haven't seen Contact, it's a really, um, interesting, fun movie. It's got Jodie Foster, James Woods, um, basically about a doctor, and she uses those big satellite things to listen to space, and so they're basically always pointing them in different directions, trying to see if there's any signals um, coming from space, and uh, eventually they 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 do hear something, and then. Um, it's kind of a code, and so they figure out the code, and they figure out the the code is telling them to build something, and so they build the spaceship and the well, it's not a spaceship; it's a time travel machine, and so they uh, this this sound that they're sending, um, whoever's sending it, they don't really ever explain who is sending the signal, but um, well, I guess do at the end they do. Um, uh, so Jodie Foster. She kind of gets bumped when they build the first. It, it, it's just, I don't want to spoil it if you haven't seen it, but uh, it's kind of a science fiction, not really space travel, but time travel, but only at the end. Um, I don't know. It's an interesting, fun story. Uh, it's uh, basically a Zemeckis a directed adaption of the Carl Sagan novel um, that he wrote. So, a really fun movie. Um, so, check it out. Uh, 1995 Empire Records and talk about a that's a fun movie it takes place in a record store um, it's got great music a great soundtrack 
Uh, Liv Tyler is in it. Um, I'm trying to think of um, some of the other uh, Empire Records. Um, but it's just fun. Basically, uh, young kids working there, and uh, they find out that the owner is going to sell. Um, I think he has to sell the record store, and uh, then they try to help him save it. And so... Um, it's kind of the story of them helping save. I'm trying to f- see who else here. Um, oh, Renee, a, a very young Renee Zellweger is in it. So check it out. Um, Rory Cochran. I don't know. Once you watch it, there's going to be uh, Toby Maguire. You're going to watch it, and there's going to be some people in it, and you're going to be like, oh, I, I know who that is. I know who that is. So it's it's one of those movies where there was a lot of actors that weren't well known at the time that are in it, and now almost all of them are real well known. Um, but it's just kind of fun because they weren't that well known uh, during you know when it first came out. So um, check it out. It's a fun movie again. Empire Records from uh, 1995. Um. 2004, 13, going on 30. I don't think I've talked about this one yet, have I? Uh, let me go back up real quick. Um, no, it was another one. So this is 13 going on 30 is uh, basically one of those movies where uh, a young girl uh, doesn't want to be young and she wishes that she could be older and then uh, through some magic dust she becomes older and it's uh, Jennifer Garner this is just a fun it's a rom-com um, but it's it's a fun movie of her uh, basically overnight going from 13 to 30 and and not knowing how or why and and dealing so basically she's still in her mind thinks she's 13, but she's got a 30-year-old body, so she's dealing with all that. Um, She looks up an old boyfriend, well, a friend, and uh, and, and, um, which is played by... I don't have it. It's not showing me right there. But um, it's just there's good chemistry between them, and she's living with a boyfriend, but... um, doesn't really like him as this new version of herself. And so she kind of tries to get back with uh, the boy that she had kind of chumped back uh, in high school. 13 going on 30. Um, It is, my memory is gone. It's Mark Ruffalo. So I really enjoyed Mark Ruffalo in this. It's also got um, Judy Greer. She's kind of the bad the bad girl in it. So, um, just a fun movie. It's got some good, uh, they do a really fun dance to thriller. Um, it's got a good soundtrack. It's got some good music in it and it's just a feel good movie. It's, it's a fun, uh, feel good movie at the end. So if you have not seen 13 going on 30, I would recommend it. This one, I'm pretty sure you have not seen. Um, this movie has gotten some really bad reviews on Rotten Tomatoes and other stuff. It's uh, from 2006 and it's called Catch and Release. And I just, I love this movie. It's a simple, easy movie. Again, for, I, I must really like Jennifer Garner because uh, it's got Jennifer Garner in it. Uh, but listen to this. It's got Kevin Smith in it. Um, he's funny. It's, it's great. It's got uh, Timothy Oliphant in it. Um, it's just basically, she has this boyfriend, well, fiance that she's going to marry. Well, he ends up dying and then she's dealing with his death with his friends and, um, they're all together for the funeral. And then all of a sudden another girl shows up who is, he was cheating on Jennifer Garner with, and she's played by... Um, let me find her name because she's really great. It's got a great thing about it is it's got a great cast and I don't know why, um, why people don't like the movie. It's, it's really fun. Um, it's got Jennifer Garner, Kevin Smith. 
Um, Juliette Lewis is in it. So just that, you know, just them alone makes it fun. Um, so check it out. Uh, again, it's got some good songs, just a kind of a simple movie. It's got some fishing in it and um, just a fun, a fun movie. So I would highly recommend it. Uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory from 1971. It's just one of those movies that just nostalgia takes me back to being a kid because it was one of those movies that I think it, it was kind of like, and then the, the one after it is uh, Wizard of Oz from 1939. Basically, both of those movies are fantasy, uh, great movies for kids, and we watched them when we were kids, but we only got to watch them like one time a year. If you missed it, you didn't get to see it for a year. Whereas now, um, they pop up on television all the time, and, and they both have songs that take me back to being a kid, you know, back in the 70s. And so um, I'm, you pretty, I think pretty much everybody knows what Willy Wonka and The Wizard of Oz are about. But anyway, those two are on my list. Um, I can almost always uh, stop and watch those. And I, this next one, I don't know what it is. I, well, I don't know. Um, it's 1990s Tremors. Uh, talk about a weird, goofy movie. Um, I don't know why I like it so much, but maybe it's because it's set in kind of a desert um, town. And it stars Kevin Bacon and Fred Ward. And it's also got Reba McIntyre in it. And it's about those huge worms that are that are going through the desert and they pop up and they suck people in and eat them. And uh, the people in this small town have to try to survive and keep the worms from eating them. And so it's just kind of a fun uh, movie about them. It's got Michael Gross. He's kind of this dude with lots of weapons and guns and uh, helps destroy the worms. But then they, they went on to have trimmers two, three and whatever, um, but definitely see the original, the 1990. Um, I don't know what it is about it. It's really, a, you're going to watch it and think how stupid, but um, there's just something about it that I really enjoy. So I just, uh, when it comes on, I will sit there and uh, leave it on and watch it. Uh, from Dusk Till Dawn uh, from 1996 is a super fun movie. It's another Quentin Tarantino movie. He star he actually stars is one of the stars in this movie. Uh, he and George Clooney are brothers that are on the lam. Uh, the police are trying to catch him. They hijack, kidnap a family. Uh, Harvey Keitel and his kids again. Juliet uh, Lewis is one of the kids. Um, they kind of kidnap them to get across the border. They go into Mexico, decide to stop at this bar. Well, the bar turns out to be kind of the base for a gang of vampires. So it's kind of the, the, them trying to survive a night, um, in this bar full of vampires. So super fun, uh, great, uh, songs in it, um, trying to think of who, uh, who the queen um, uh, why can't I think? Um, boy, my mind is gone. Um, I apologize. I'm trying to look um, from dusk till dawn. I'm trying to look some of this up so I don't leave you guys hanging, even though you guys probably, as usual, are screaming at your device telling me who the name of um, Selma Hayek is. So she's in it, uh, does a great do job. Uh, Danny Trejo is in it. And uh, just a fun, a fun movie, a little violent, uh, some language, some uh, skin. So probably not for the kids, but um, you guys check it out from Dust Till Dawn. And then there is 2004 version of Dawn of the Dead. For some reason, I really became a super duper zombie fan. And out of all of the zombie movies, this is one of my favorite. Um, and so, again, uh, Dawn of the Dead from 2004. It's basically about uh, a group of people that are escaping the zombies, and they all end up in a, uh, a shopping mall, and they kind of barricade themselves in. It's got uh, Ving Rhames 
in it, and uh, basically it's just them trying to survive. Uh, so, and then they escape from the mall, and the zombies are after them. So, if you like zombie movies and you have not seen Dawn of the Dead, it is the one to see. And then the last one on my list of 35 is all the way from back in 1954, a Rear Window. Um, and I don't think I had seen this movie until maybe five, five or six years ago. I had never seen it. And um, I was just in one of those moods where I was flipping around and I, I stopped and there was Jimmy Stewart and I thought, you know what, I've, I kind of have heard about this movie, but I've never sat and watched it. So I just basically sat and watched it and fell in love with it. And so anytime I do catch this movie on, I will watch it. I've probably seen it um, probably six times. It's not on that often, but, um, you know, we're talking Jimmy Stewart, Grace Kelly, Raymond Burr, uh, directed by Alfred Hitchcock. It's just a great movie of this guy that that I think he broke his leg, so he's kind of stuck in his apartment, and he basically looks out his rear window, and it's just all this activity going on in these apartments across from him, and he's basically a voyeur and watching what goes on, and then all of a sudden he thinks uh, that there might have been, he might have witnessed a murder, and I don't want to spoil it for you if you haven't seen it, but uh, so it kind of goes uh, from there, but um, if you have not seen Rear Window, if you're young, you probably haven't. Again, it's from 1954. If you uh, have not seen a Jimmy Stewart movie, this would be one of them to see. Um, if you've never seen a Grace Kelly movie, uh, watch this one, and uh, you'll really enjoy it. So, so that's basically my list of movies, 35 movies, and there's probably a few more that I haven't thought of that I could add to that list, but basically any time one of those 35 movies comes on, I'll pretty much stop changing the channel and I will watch it um, or listen to it over and over and over again. And then there's probably some movies that you may be wondering, well, what about these movies? So, so there, I've, I've got a short list of a second tier. Now, these are movies that I've probably seen half a dozen to a dozen times, but I don't watch them every time I click past them. Sometimes... I'm, I'm, I would say the majority of the time I'll stop and watch them, but there are times when I'll be like, okay, I've seen that one within the past year, so I'm not going to watch it again. But here's a quick list um, of those, and it's uh, Kong, Skull Island. I uh, really, really love that one. It's a, if you like King Kong, I would say it's one of the best uh, King Kong movies. And the cool thing about it is um, it... I think it it just takes yeah it just takes place there. They don't get Kong off the island, um, so check it out. Uh, Breakfast Club is one of those '80s kid genre type movies. Now I, I really like Breakfast Club, but I think I saw it so many times way back when that I don't watch it every time it's on now. Uh, now Pulp Fiction is a lot like. The Green Mile and Shawshank Redemption, but Pulp Fiction, I'm more likely to get stuck watching. Uh, if I if I stay on it too long, I'll just go ahead and, and watch it again. Uh, Dead Poet Society, which is not on that often. It's a great movie that I watch every time I catch it. Sixteen Candles is another uh, Pretty in Pink and Breakfast Club. It's basically a Rat Pack movie. Um, uh, a great movie. For some reason, I like Pretty in Pink better. Sixteen Candles is is fun, but um, I don't watch it every time, almost every time. Um, and then there, here's two more. Uh, Secondhand Lions is one of the better movies just in general out there. And I may be lying when I say I don't watch it every time uh, it comes on because I probably do, and I probably need to move it up to... Uh, that first category, but Secondhand Lions, if you have not seen it, uh, definitely just sit down and watch. It's a, it's a real, real feel-good movie. Great actors. I mean, great actors. Um, so check it out, Secondhand Lions. And then uh, I bet almost nobody has seen uh, the last one on my list, and it's called The Descendants. 
and it's a George Clooney movie. And I think the reason I like it is because it's on Hawaii, and I kind of like the Hawaiian vibe and the quirkiness. It's just one of those quirky movie. I mean, really quirky, kind of a quirky movie, but just a enough actors that you recognize every actor in the movie, and the storyline is fun enough that uh, you kind of get caught up in it. And it's got some some fun little tunes in it, but uh, I just for some reason I really enjoy it as well. So uh, the Descendants. So anyway, there is my list of uh, over forty movies. Um, so I can, I can easily say if you guys have not seen any one of those movies, I think you would probably enjoy, um, every one of them on my list. So, uh, write it down and, uh, go have a movie fest, check them all out and let me know if there's one of these movies that you have never seen and you go ahead and watch it, uh, let me know what you thought. And it's not going to hurt my feelings, Um, like Tremors or something, if you're, if you're like, uh, I don't, you know, I don't get it. I don't like that movie. It was awful. I couldn't watch the whole thing. I mean, let me know. Um, because again, these aren't the best movies. These aren't award-winning movies. These are just, there's just something about these movies. And I think a lot of them is just the score and the, the songs, but, Other ones are just the adventure, the adventure in them. Sometimes it's just the, I like the lines, some of the dialogue in them. It's fun listening to it over and over again. So um, you guys let me know. Uh, Send your uh, comments to Curtis at CurtisTucker.com. And uh, please subscribe to the podcast, A Shaggy Life, or subscribe to my YouTube channel. And, uh, you know, the more subscribers I get here and there, you know, if, if I could start making a little bit of money with all this stuff, then I can, I would definitely do a lot more fun stuff, a lot more videos, a lot more episodes. Um, right now, of course, I'm just doing it for fun because I enjoy it. Uh, not really making any money with any of it uh, at this point, but uh, hopefully I'm going to get some t-shirts done and uh, some fun design. So uh, I think I finally got the store working again on CurtisTucker.com. And so I just need to come up with some new t-shirt designs and uh, I'll let you guys know when I get those going, but check it out. And I appreciate you uh, listening to this episode. Hopefully I'll have something fun for next week. Send me your ideas. I'll have uh, some ideas and I'm going to get out of here. See ya.